Joy is not based on circumstances. Joy comes from within. A Christian, a Christian can have inner joy, which the world knows nothing about. And of course, we know that joy comes from having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Welcome to the Lift Up Jesus television broadcast. I'm Pastor Dudley Rutherford, and I want to thank you for joining me here today. Of all the things you could be doing right now, you've chosen to study the Word of God with me as we start a brand new series that is all about joy. With the ups and downs and trials and tribulations of life, is it really possible for God's people to have joy in the midst of it all? Well, we're going to answer that question with a resounding yes today as we study Ephesians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul wrote Ephesians from a damp, dusty, cold, filthy prison in Rome, unsure of what fate awaited him. Paul still encouraged believers in Ephesus to rejoice in the Lord, and he prayed a powerful prayer that we too can pray for God's blessings upon our lives. I can't wait to begin, so grab your Bible and pen and let's dive into our first message called Abundant Joy in Christ. So far, 2021 uh, continues to be just as crazy as 2020. So many people believed erroneously that if somehow we could just turn a page of a calendar that somehow everything would be better. Hold that thought. I have shared with several people that as bad as everything was in 2020, that the biggest storms could yet still be on the horizon. I heard a funny story about three people that were arguing about what profession was first seen in the Bible. A surgeon spoke first, and he suggested the medical profession was used first in the Bible when God took a rib out of Adam's side and made Eve. An engineer spoke up and said, no, engineering was here first. He said, just think of the engineering that it took to create the world out of chaos in the very, very beginning. To which a politician spoke up and said, where do you think the chaos came from? Most of us would agree, as we look at our world today, all we see is chaos. I was on a Zoom call this week with our staff, and I shared this Bible verse. I want to show it to you on the screen. Isaiah 45, verse 5, that reads, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I want you to say that verse with me. Let's repeat that verse. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I want to encourage each of you, as I wrote in a post this week, that if you keep looking for hope in Washington, you will be forever disappointed. I choose to keep serving the people around me and pointing people to Jesus. The Bible tells us that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And if we don't do that, we will keep being poisoned by the evil and destruction in our world. Today, I'm glad you're here because I have come to share and to address the new theme for this coming year. In light of everything that has gone on in our country, the chaos and the division, People living in isolation and fear. People experiencing depression. Suicide rates going through the roof. Evil that is prevailing. More people than I've ever seen, their lives filled to the brim with anxiety. A country that continues to lose its moral compass. For many months, I've been on this journey of praying 
and seeking God's will for our church for the coming 12 months. At first, I spent a long time looking at this phrase, abundant life. John chapter 10, 10, you know it. Jesus speaks of the devil that came to kill, steal, and to destroy. And we kind of see that happening before our very eyes. But then Jesus said, but I have come to give you life and to, and to have it more abundantly or more full. And of course, we believe that true life when centered around Christ, that life is full and blessed and fulfilling, amen? But then my mind and my study, I began to shift away from the abundant life. I, there was just something about it that just didn't seem quite, to, quite fitting for this coming year. And all of a sudden, the Lord put this word in my heart, the word joy, because joy is what's missing in our lives. It's missing in our marriages, in our culture, and in our nation. People don't have joy. What I see are people living in fear, people living in despair, people living, being emotionally depleted. And in our world, in our news, and in our culture, I ask you, where is the joy? Where is the peace? Where is contentment? All you need to do is spend 60 seconds. You don't need, don't need any more than that. Just spend 60 seconds on social media, and you will see the division and the hatred and the vitriol and the despair. And everything that you read is a reflection of what's going on inside people's hearts. And so what I did is I picked up the Bible, I began to read, and you would be shocked by how many verses, but I began to read through the Bible all the verses that, that have the word joy in that verse. And of course, I hope that you understand that joy comes from within. Joy is not based on circumstances. Joy comes from within. A Christian, a Christian can have inner joy, which the world knows nothing about, and of course, we know that joy comes from having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? You ought to all be clapping on that one. So, so I read all these verses in the Bible, and then I landed on this one verse that's so powerful, 1 Peter 1, verse 8. It will be our theme verse for the year. And it reads, though you have not seen him, you love him. And I want to ask, how many people in this room... You have never seen Jesus, but you love him. Raise your hand. You've never seen him, but you love him. All right. That's true. And even though you do not see him now, I mean this very moment in the midst of all this chaos, you still believe in him. And even though you've not seen Jesus, yet you love him and you believe in him, the Bible says you will then be filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. A joy that is so great and so divine, so difficult to even explain, you don't even have enough words in your vocabulary to adequately explain the joy that resonates deep within you. And I ask you, as you live your life during this season of life, when was the last time you looked at someone and said, man, that person is just full of joy? You don't see that today. And so based on this verse, 1 Peter 1, 8, our theme for the next 12 months, I want you to write this down, is abundant joy in Christ. Abundant joy in Christ. And I want the next 12 months in this church, I want to take you on a journey through the scriptures that will lift your spirits that will encourage you and I want you to know that when you come to church each and every week to worship and to study the Word of God that your life and your heart your soul your family we're gonna teach you how to have abundant joy in Christ Jesus there that's where we're going now grab your sermon notes if you will I wanna I wanna start with this Fill in the blank question. Life is, and you can write whatever you would write in that blank. Some people would write, life is difficult. 
Life is a bowl of cherries or Cheerios, whatever it is for you. Life is a rat race. Life is a paycheck. Life, as Forrest Gump would say, Mama said it's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. Sadly for many people, life is a daily boring routine of merely existing, just trying to get by, trying to survive. Some people's lives, it's just wrapped up. They believe life is just wrapped up in acquiring possessions. Obviously, for some people, life is strictly politics. Some, it's found in the pursuits of life or in the positions or in pleasures of life or in the performances of life. And I would say to you and challenge you, and I want you to write this down, that life, true life, is found in Christ alone. It's found in Christ alone. I have three Bible references there for you underneath that phrase in your notes. John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said these words. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Then Jesus said these words in John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. And then we looked at that verse again uh, already, John 10, 10, where Jesus said, uh, the devil has come to kill still and to destroy, but he said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And I've highlighted the word I. You might circle that in your Bible. If you have your, just circle the word I. Who is I? That, that, that is not a salesperson. That's not a political party. That's not someone who's at the top of some pyramid scheme. It's not a professor in a university. It's, the I is not a social media influencer. Who is I? I is Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, God in flesh, our Redeemer. Jesus is the one who's speaking. And Jesus is telling the world that I am the vehicle by which you can have life and have it more abundantly. The Savior of the world. For our remaining time, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Turn to Ephesians chapter 3. This is a prayer that Paul prays. It's actually a prayer. And it's a prayer of a, of, of a blessing. And I honestly do not know of anything that we need more this moment than prayer. And I want to start off this year as Paul prayed this prayer right here for the church, his church, in the city of Ephesus. I want to pray this prayer right now for each and every one of you. I know he prayed it for his church. I want to pray it for this church. Is that okay? I want to encourage you as I pray, before I pray, as a church, I want to challenge each and every one of you to memorize this text. Now, I've been preaching here for 35-something years. I've never, in those 35 years, asked you to memorize a large portion of Scripture. I've never asked you. But for this year, during this season, I want to see if you will memorize, at least accept that challenge to try. How many of you are willing to at least try, okay? You, some of you don't even want to try? <laughs> I want to ask you again, how many of you at least, you'll at least try to memorize it? Now, now you say, well, well how, how am I going to do that? Well, first of all, you've got to get a Bible. You got to get a Bible, raise, raise, unless you've already memorized it. Raise your hand if, if you've got a Bible. You, you got to get a Bible. Then you write it out, and you can put it on your refrigerator, put it on your mirror in your bathroom, put it on the nightstand, put it next to your computer, and just spend a little time every day just trying to memorize this prayer. All right, I'm, I'm trying to help give you abundant joy. Okay, we're going to start with memorizing this passage. 
Now, some people, they, they, they can read it one time and they can just quote it. How many of you hate people like that? <laughs> I, I have to read it like 100 times, I, I, sometimes 200 times to memorize it. I, that's just the way God made me. But some people, they just read it one time, they, they, they're, they're, they're going to memorize it right now during church. <laughs> but the rest of us, it, it's going to take a little elbow grease, okay? But I want to challenge you to, to memorize this text. And uh, then you're going to be able to pray this prayer, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So at this time, I'm going to pray this prayer blessing over each of you. Is that okay? So turn to Ephesians chapter 3, starting with verse 14, and you can see I've highlighted uh, that text, all right? So, so I don't have this memorized currently, but I'm, I'm going to memorize it as, along with you. Is that, is that cool? Okay, so we're all going to do this together. Now, I'm going to do right now what's called praying the Scriptures. You kind of read the text, but you make it a prayer. But this is actually a prayer. But again, I'm going to kind of take his prayer and pray it over you. Is that cool? All right, here we go. And this, is, this, this is my prayer for each of, of you as we head into 2021. Verse 14. Everybody say verse 14. Lord, I'm here on my knees before you. You are my heavenly Father. And every believer in heaven on this earth, we bear your name. And I pray, verse 15, Lord, as the pastor of this church, that out of your glorious riches, and Lord, I know you have a lot of them, that, that you, O oh God, would strengthen every person who's here today and every person who's listening and give each of them power that comes through your spirit in our inner being. And Lord, verse 17, I pray for every person in this room that you, O oh Lord, would dwell within the heart of every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. And Lord, don't go in our heart and just take up that little, like, like up, up in that one little corner. Take residence in the entire heart and dwell there. Live there. And I pray, God, for every person here that they would be rooted and established in love. And that we in verse 18 would somehow have this enough power together. And Lord, I just don't pray this for Shepherd Church, along with all the other believers all around the world, that somehow we could just grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ. Help us to understand the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that every person here would be filled to the measure of all of the fullness of God. Now, Lord, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all shepherd could ever ask or imagine, according to that power that is at work within us, to you be the glory in this church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever and ever and ever, amen and amen. That's my prayer blessing over you. Now, I want you to write down the five pillars, write them as quickly as you can, the five pillars of that prayer. There were five things that I prayed for for you, that Paul prayed for the Ephesians. You're praying for power, through God's Spirit, you're praying that Christ would dwell in your heart, you're praying that you would be rooted and established in love, write that down, write down the fact that we're praying that somehow we could understand the love of Christ. I think some of us think that God only loves a certain portion of this country, and the rest of you can go to you know where. Christ loves all of us. 
We need, to, we need to get back to understanding that. And we need to pray, the fifth pillar, is that we, we need to be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. And I want you to look at those five things. Power, Christ dwelling in your heart, you being rooted, established in love, all of us understanding the love of God, and being full to the measure of the fullness of God. Look at that list. How many of you can see, looking at this list, that if you had all five of these things going on right now in your life, that your life would be a zillion times better off? Absolutely. And I want you to know that you can pray this prayer for yourself. You just, that's why I want you to memorize it. So you can get down on your knee and you can say, uh, for this reason, God, I'm kneeling right here before you. And in uh, verse 16, I pray out of your glorious riches, God, that you would strengthen me. Instead of you, you just say, Lord, strengthen me with power. And verse 17, Christ, would you please dwell in in my heart? Let me have enough faith to know that you're there. And I pray, God, that I would be rooted into stay. You just pray that prayer for yourself. I also want you to know that you can pray this prayer for someone else. Get down on your knees and pray that prayer for your spouse every day and see what happens in your marriage. Pray this prayer every day for your children. Anybody here have children that have gone astray or that you're worried about? Get down on your knees and pray this prayer every day for your children. Pray it for your neighbor. Pray it for your boss. Are you listening? I want to ask you, are you listening? I want you to pray this prayer for the person that has the polar opposite political view than you. We are a divided country. We live in liberal California. You feel it more than anywhere else because a lot of us are liberal and a lot of us are conservative even in the church. And it doesn't matter where you are or who you're talking to, if you say something, you give any view that you hold, you will be instantly attacked by other people. Well, how in the world could you vote for someone who you think's a racist? How can you vote for a racist? Well, how can you vote for someone who supports abortion? And back and forth we go. And instead of beating up the person that holds the opposite political view than you, why don't you get down on your knees and start praying for these five things to happen in the heart of that person who thinks differently than you. Could you tell I got real serious there for a few minutes there? (laughs) All of these blessings are found in Christ. So stop pursuing the things of this world and start pursuing the things of God. All of these blessings, if we had time to really go through this text, which you know, I want you to memorize it. As you memorize it, you're gonna, let, me, let me tell you, you're going to get this text down in the depths of your soul as you memorize this. But all of these blessings come from two things. Write them down. They're in the text. All of these things come from God's glorious riches, and they come from His power that is within us. Each of us have one major issue to overcome. As I've looked at everything, I've reached this conclusion, your view of God is too small. We don't understand how great God is, how rich God is, how powerful God is, how mighty God is, how graceful and merciful is the Lord God. We don't understand how holy God is. You understanding the fullness of God is like an ant trying to understand the fullness of you. That ant doesn't have the ability or the capability to understand a human being. And in that same way, we're down here on earth, we must look like ants to God. We're down here telling like we know everything and we we know nothing compared to all the things that God knows. 
if you truly knew how great and how mighty and how loving and how powerful God was, you would never ever worry about another thing on planet Earth the rest of your life, if you truly knew. Oh, I hope you enjoyed learning the five important ways that we as Christians can grow and have abundant joy in Christ. Paul's prayer for the Ephesians teaches us that we can ask God for power through His Spirit and for Christ to dwell in our hearts. We pray that we would become rooted and established in love, that we would understand God's immense love for us, and that we would be filled to the measure with the fullness of God. Will you commit to memorizing this prayer? Just study a line or two each day, and before you know it, you'll be able to recite this prayer by heart. I guarantee it will change your life. Join me next week as we begin our series called Invincible Joy. I'm looking forward to this journey and discovering and maintaining your joy no matter what comes your way. And until then, wherever you're going and whatever you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Hey, it's Pastor Dudley, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. You know that I love to preach, I love the Word of God, and I love lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. And this program, it's called Lift Up Jesus. And that's why we exist, to lift up Jesus, because we know He will draw all people unto Himself. We need people like you, who watch week after week, who give, offer financial support, who pray for us, that makes all of this possible. I just wanna encourage you to call us on the number on the screen or go to our website. We would appreciate any gift, any amount of support you could give us. And remember that we'll take every dollar and use that to lift up Jesus that the world might believe. God bless each and every one of you. And remember, whatever you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Research proves that it's the regular hearing and teaching of the Word of God that takes our Christian life to a new level. That's why we invite you to meet Dudley Rutherford every week on this station for another powerful message straight from the Bible. You can also visit liftupjesus.com to sign up for our monthly email devotional, discover Pastor Dudley's books and other resources, and see our national TV and radio schedule. And don't hesitate to reach out on the phone or online. Pastor Dudley has a passion and vision to reach more people with a message of hope. And if you'd like to partner with us to touch the world, we'd love to hear from you. Your financial gift will do so much to help us impact the nations for Christ. And if you're ever in the Southern California area, we invite you to visit us at Shepherd Church here in Los Angeles. It's an amazing experience you'll never forget. Until next time, remember to always lift up Jesus.